She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is the Danny Johnson Show. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Thanks for joining us today for the Danny Johnson Show. It's Wednesday. Wednesday is our spiritual equipping day where we dive deep into the best success book ever written uh, to kind of guide us, to refresh us, to encourage us, to enlighten us, and maybe even help us to solve a problem that we don't even know that we have. I got a confession to make. During the season of Rosh Hashanah, which is a season, it's a biblical holiday, meaning it's actually called um, the day Yom Teura, which is the day of trumpets, the day of the shofar, the day of the blowing of the shofar. And um, that whole thing is about returning back to God. And something had happened to me. Actually, it was actually after the 10 days of awe, where it's like a time of repentance and, and a time of searching your heart, to then ends in Yom Kippur. And we did several shows during the high holidays um, of the Bible, the biblical holidays, um, the biblical like mandated holidays. Um, and so anyway, I got, I got to tell you something that happened that was kind of crazy, like really crazy. Have you ever been stubborn before? Have you ever found yourself not wanting to do the right thing? Are you in that place right now? That's why I think that our appointment time today right now is like, I think it's from God. I really do. I think if you are listening to me right this minute, it is because he has something very specific for you and me. And so it, l before we go any further, if you don't mind, I'm going to pray. Father, thank you so much for, um, yeah your technology. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the airwaves. Thank you for the internet. Thank you for my friend who is listening right now and that we're going to have the opportunity to, to communicate with one another, um, whether it be by voice or by typing, writing comments. Um, Father, I thank you that um, you are giving us this opportunity to be able to kind of study you and, and your ways and and uh, to ha have you look into our hearts. Uh, and in fact, Father, I just, I pray what David prayed, search my heart, O God, and reveal within me any wicked ways, any way that doesn't line up with you. Um, remove it and give me a steadfast spirit that serves you, that loves you and loves your ways. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen. That's in the name of Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Okay, so Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement, right? And it's actually mandated in the Bible that we are supposed to keep that day totally set apart every single year for all generations, it says. It, it didn't say it was going to stop when Messiah came. No, for all generations. And many believe that Jesus, Yeshua, his Hebrew name, he was born around the time of Yom Kippur. Um, yeah, which kind of would lean to making a whole lot of sense. And, and you know, actually the whole thing from, from the day of trumpets is a time of repentance, you know, b before man. And then the time of repentance before God is a whole day of fasting. And then five days later is the Feast of Tabernacles. Remember, and Yahweh sent his son and he came and he dwelled out among us. Um, and that's the whole thing of the Feast of Tabernacles. And so many believe that that's the time of year that, that he was born. So anyway, uh, there's a story inside of uh, the Gospels. It's really powerful. And um, I promise I'm going to get to the point. So Yom Kippur is about forgiveness, right? And it's 25 hours of like fasting and praying and asking God for forgiveness. And you are, you are like going through every possible thing that you did that year to dishonor him, dishonor yourself, dishonor his creation. And it's a really powerful day. It's like a cleansing day. That's like what it is. It's like a full-on cleansing day. Well, the night when it was over, right? So Yom Kippur ends when the sun goes down. Um, something very odd happened to me. And by the way, it is believed, it's tradition, that that's the day that God seals the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, that, that's the day that seals. So your name gets written in it on the day of, um, uh, uh, of the trumpets. That's when your name gets written in it, that if you are repenting and you're returning back to him, your name is now in the Lamb's Book of Life. But 
on where as Yom Kippur comes to a close and you have asked for you've repented before your God. Okay, so it's like repentance from man, repentance from God. Now it is sealed. The book is closed. It's sealed and your destiny is set for that next year. Okay, so this is the tradition of the Hebrews and it's been going on for thousands of years. So it's something really powerful to ponder on, right? It's really powerful. And so that night, okay, so here it's over. I'm about to break my fast. I make this amazing meal for myself and and my son and, and my husband, and we're eating outside. And my husband says something that kind of makes me go, he got a little like, and I was like, and so I just kind of held my breath. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to choose kindness. I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to choose edification right now. I'm going to choose patience. I'm going to walk in the Holy Spirit right now. I'm going to sit in the Holy Spirit because I really want to run my mouth right now. But I chose not to run my mouth. Okay, so okay, okay. And then a couple hours later, around bedtime, there was something else. It was a little snippy. And I was like, Whoa. and friend, I like, I rolled over and I started to stew. I did. This is like right after Yom Kippur, right? Hello? Here, I just experienced the beautiful elation of being forgiven by my God, okay? And right now, I want to be mad. I want to be stubborn. We're talking it's just hours later, okay? I want to be mad. I want to be stubborn. And mind you, that he did not do something that was like even worthy for me to be mad. To be quite honest with you, for some reason, I was just a little easy to get pithy, right? So through the night, I ended up not sleeping. And here's what, here's what was going on. The Holy Spirit reminded me of a passage. Oof. And in this passage, there is a, yeah, a man who has a debt. And it is a time where he has to go before the king and he cannot pay his debt. And they are going to take his family from him. They're going to take his land from him. He's going to turn into a slave. His children and his wife are going to be slaves and his land is now going to be recovered. And the king now is going to own it because the man again has not paid off his debt. And so he's there. He's begging the king, please tears. I mean, he's begging, please, I'll do this. I'll do this. Please give me more time. Please give me more time. So the king says, okay, your debts are canceled. Okay. Your debts are forgiven. <gasps> the man leaves the, the courtyards. He's skipping with joy. He's like, yes. And who does he see along the road? He sees somebody that owes him money. And when he sees this person that owes him money, he's like, hey, you pig. And he gets over to him. He beats him and he throws him to the jailers. You need to pay me back. He shows no mercy after just moments before receiving mercy from the king. So I'm sitting there awake. I'm stewing. I'm pithy. I don't want him to talk to me and I don't want my husband to touch me. I'm being a brat and I'm being stubborn and I'm digging my heels in the ground. And here God reminds me of that passage. And I am blown away that even after I get reminded about that passage, I'm still like, hmm, hmm. Whew. He then reminds me of a few more. And then he reminds me that, yeah, my husband has extended me so much mercy, so much forgiveness. In our early years of our marriage, I was a wicked, horrible person. I was a mean woman. I was verbally abusive to him. I emasculated him. I emotionally abused him. I even physically like tried to punch and kick and hurt him and throw things at him. I also was not the faithful wife that I should have been. And when I confessed these things to him, he freely, yes, he was hurt. 
Yes, and he had every right in the world to cast me out. He had every right in the world to be a mean, mean man. He had every right in the world to refuse to forgive me, but he chose to forgive me of some really bad things. And his mercy was amazing. I, in fact, because of that forgiveness, I got closer to him. Because of that forgiveness, my heart fully went in on trusting him to a level that I did not even know was possible. In fact, I didn't even know that I didn't trust him prior to this moment. So here I get reminded of that passage. Look, look at me, man. Here I just spent 25 hours fasting and praying before God, walking away at sunset going, I am forgiven, knowing that I am, feeling like I am sealed. And look, whew, we're, ta we're, ta we're talking like 30 minutes later, and I want to get piffy? And then two hours after that, I want to get piffy? And then I want to stay piffy for hours? Look at our human nature. Look at the stubbornness that can rise up in us, even when we have the Messiah dwelling in us and the Holy Spirit in us, and we have his word all round about us, and no matter how much we study it, the bottom line is we have to come to a place where we make the choice. And that is to do the right thing. That is to do the right thing. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when you don't want to. Even when you want to stay mad. What you have to understand, and this is what hit me, is like, oh my gosh, I am literally acting like that guy. I'm literally acting like that guy. And look at me. I'm just like, Phew. I don't care how much he has forgiven me. I don't care the kind of mercy that he showed me. And then I just finally broke, like, Father, help me. Because this isn't anywhere even near something that even needs to be forgiven, man. It's just like, just something stupid. And look at me. Father, help me to forgive. Help me to not be stubborn. I give you my stubborn heart. I give you my stubborn heart. Because I'm going to tell you something. Right away, I started going, oh, my gosh. Was I, did I not make it in the book? Was I not sealed? Did I, did I do something wrong? No, see, I was being tempted. Now look at this. We even see in the Gospels where Yeshua has his 40 days of fasting, right? He has his 40 days of fasting. He's probably starving. No water, no food, whatever. And, and, and then what happens? He goes straight into the desert to be tempted by Satan himself. To be tempted. Three times he's tempted. So here I am, I'm being tempted. Are you being tempted to be stubborn? Are you being temp tempted to be unmerciful? Are you being tempted to be bitter and unforgiving? Are you being tempted to be stiff necked and arrogant? I was 30 minutes after Yom Kippur and sadly, I fell under that temptation for several hours, so much so that it kept me up all through the night and the stewing continued to get worse until I finally came to a, a place of, I need to choose to do the right thing. So I'm gonna say that to you today. Ask God to search your heart. Are you on the right path? Are you walking in the wrong path? Because there's all kinds of curses that are going to come at you. And there's all kinds of torment that's going to come at you if you continue to hold on. And you're like, but Danny, i got big things I need to forgive for. It doesn't matter, big or small. It doesn't matter. But I can tell you this. There's a great blessing, a beautiful blessing, when you choose to do the right thing. By the way, whatever happened to that man that was written in the Gospels, that, that through his friend, Amongst the jailers, well, he got his. The king got wind of it and said, how dare you? I showed you mercy and you did not show mercy. I forgave you for far more than what needed to be forgiven of that man. I canceled your debts and you're trying to collect money from a debt? You should have done what I did for you. So now for you, I'm taking everything from you. I'm taking everything from you, friend. Do the right thing. Let's pray. 
Father, I pray that you move our hearts. I love the words that you put in Hans's mouth, that what is harder to move than the heart of man? There's no mountain bigger than the heart of an arrogant, stubborn human. Father, break us down. In fact, I choose right now. I choose. In fact, I want you to say this after me. Say, Father, forgive me for my stubbornness. Father, forgive me for my arrogance. Father, forgive me for my bitterness. Father, forgive me for my lack of humility, for being merciless, bitter, and resentful. Father, forgive me for not giving what I have received, but expecting to get more than I've received. Father, expose to me who I need to forgive and what for, that I may be free, that I may be able to walk with you, that I may be able to experience your love. Expose to me what I need to forgive and who. I'm just going to pause just as you're just sitting there with the Holy Spirit right now. Is it your boss? Do you need to ask for forgiveness for gossip? Do you need to ask for forgiveness for, for mutiny, for division? Do you need to ask for forgiveness for the, the, that heart that's just like, no, I want that person to do what's right first. Okay, come on. I want you to search your office right now. I want you to search your house right now. I want to search the loved ones that you're about to see here in a couple of weeks. I want you to search it all. Because if you got a clean heart, then he can move through you. He can change you. He can advance you. He can promote you. He can bless you. And yes, he can even cancel your debts. Come on. He can open doors that no man can shut. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. So I'm going to leave you right here right now. And I want you to search through every single part of your life. And I want you to ask him to show you, to shine that light so that you can present and lay down that stubborn heart before him, ask for forgiveness, and be healed. Thanks for joining me. Write your comments right there. I want to read them.